What's up guys, this is Coding Cleverly here with a new video. Today's video's topic is about C++ style guide. So we haven't covered the style guide out and the possible conventions, but I did go through some of them throughout my series. Unfortunately, this is one of the concepts that are avoided in a lot of courses on the internet and it's just like a good thing to know about and to adopt because having a convention will make it easier for other people to read your code and for you to understand your code more efficiently so let's just go through the style guide together and we're just gonna first create a file here so over here let's go to open with vs code so i'm creating an instance of vs code here i'm gonna see that the folder is over here i get some release nodes i'm gonna have to cross all of that out so over here we have to create a new file by clicking on this and then we have to type in main.cpp created a new c++ file and over here let's write some of the preprocessor directives that we need and the first one that is really sim common for all the C++ code is the IOStream preprocessor directive. So we have a space here. Notice that there's a space and then there is this. Okay, so right now let me just maximize my screen a little bit so that you could see it more clearly. Okay, right after that, we actually need something different. So the first uh, question here is why care about the style? Style always refers to the conventions that uh, govern how we write code. Now, a clean style keeps complex C++ code manageable and readable. Let's take a look at this file over here. So this example over here is an example of a code having bad style. Unlike syntax and semantics, you could see that the syntax and the semantics are correct here. But the style is another topic to think about and it's much, a, much of a subjective matter. For us, what we're gonna be considering is the Google C++ style guide. And we're gonna be copying, I mean, we're gonna be trying to follow that guide. So the link to that website will be given in the description. So we're gonna be following the C++ style guide. And this is the C++ style guide and I'm gonna be giving the link to this in the description, so go check that out. Okay, now let's write a simple Hello World program by using the style guide that is provided by Google. First of all, we have to include something. So, like when we include statements, they give us access to functionality from header file libraries. And the rule of thumb is that you have to include statements at mostly in the beginning of each C++ file. Wh whatever you see, like whatever C++ file you open, you will see the include files at the top. So there are three kinds of include header files. The first one are called C system headers. The second ones are called C++ standard library headers. And the third are called user defined libraries headers. So the first one is uh, actually with uh, the C system header example here is hash include and we have stdio.h which is used very commonly in the C language. So this is the C head system header which is also used in C++ and these have to be on the top, very on the top most. And here comes the C++ standard library headers. The famous hash include angle bracket input output stream. So this is the C++ standard library header. And I know that's a mouthful. And the user defined library should be at the bottom most thing. So the user defined library, which are the hash include user defined header will be at the bottom of all of the include statements. And over here we could just like, for instance, if it was called header file, so I would say header underscore file, and it would call dot h, so I could just include it using that. And then obviously there would be nothing else. And this is how you include a header file.h. Over here I get an error because this is not uh, detected. It's because it's not in my include path. But if it is, it will work. So the hierarchy here is hash include stdio.h. Then we have hash include io stream and the last one we have is hash include header file 
dot h. The first one we covered was the C system headers. And then the second one are the C++ standard library headers. And the third one are the user defined library headers. And that's how we're gonna be following the flow here. So the first one we're gonna be using is hash include space input output stream, the C++ header. So this is the C++ standard library here. We're gonna be using that. And after that, we're gonna to have to include our using namespace standard. In this particular video, I'm not gonna be including that. So I'm gonna give a space here, a single space. So I'm gonna be creating a main logic here, int main. And notice that I actually give a space between those two. And then after that, I gave the parentheses. And then I gave a space here, and then a squiggly bracket open, and that's how I actually created that main. So this is how it's basically done. Over here in the naming conventions, now when we name variables, for instance, we have an int and we say variable. Now the convention here is that generally speaking, the best names are those that can be immediately understood by a new reader. Whoever comes to your code and sees um, your code and, and just automatically understands what's going on. That, those are better variable names as compared to something which are difficult for you. Other thing is that the name should capture their context in the program without them being too long. And also one other important thing is that a name in C++ can never start with a digit. So this is an invalid variable name. You cannot have something like this. You should also avoid using the name of a predefined C++ keyword and that is also one of those common mistakes that people do. So you should also avoid using a predefined C++ keyword for your own variable or class. And these are a list of, uh, of keywords which are available in the C++ programming language. I'll include this in the description as well. One other thing in the Google rulebook here is that uh, the user defined class names and function names use Pascal case, which starts with a capital letter and has a capital letter for each new word with no underscores. Now, over here, if we have something, for instance, we have a class over here and we call it as L I N K E D with a capital L. And then we have a L I S T with a capital L because of this two words. And then we have basically class, and inside the class, um, we go forward with a squiggly bracket. So this class here, you could see that there is a Pascal case following. And similar to that, we have functions. So for instance, we have a void and we need to make a function, let's say bubble sort. So B-U-B-B-L-E and then we have S-O-R-T. Now over here we have bubble sort and the parentheses follow after write that and then we could have this. So this case here is that you're supposed to have the first letter capital and the second letter capital. So each letter that follows the first letter should be capital. So the user defined class names and function names use Pascal case starts with a capital letter and has a capital letter for each new word with no underscores. Variable names are all lowercase. For instance, uh, we had that variable here var. So it was in lowercase and all variable names should be in lowercase with underscore between words. So for instance, if I say something like student ID, I could say student underscore ID. It's just a convention and it's a better practice to have an underscore in variable names. Right after that are the punctuation marks. So the punctuation marks contain the brackets and the parentheses. So the brackets, the open bracket right here, you can see this one or this one over here and this one over here. These open brackets should be on the same line as the statement. So you can see that the statement is int main. Open bracket should be on the same line as the statement. The closing bracket should be placed under the last line of the code in the scope. So over here and then the last line of the code in the scope and there you go, that's the last line. The parentheses on the hand, other hand should have no space between the code inside and them. So when parentheses are used in a statement, there should be in a space before and after the parentheses. So in parentheses case over here, like for instance, if we have a control flow of a conditional say if, we have a space here and then this condition. So if I say if num is equal to one, and then after that we have to give a space here and then we could give it. So this is the basic concept or the basic convention for how to use a parenthesis according to Google. So over here we'd have num equal to one, 
and you can see that there's a space over here and then there's a space over here so there should be a space b before one the first parenthesis opening and there after the opening uh, closing parenthesis over here um, when parentheses are used as part of a function or a class then only one space after is sufficient so you don't need to have a space before this first one so let's go on with formatting and the first thing that comes up is spacing so every single type variable operator or any literal value that is inside of the c program should be separated by one space horizontally like over here we have for instance uh, let's say i have a variable string so i have to write string over here which is the data type i gave a space here and i have to write msg for my message and then I have to give a space again with my equal sign, which is the operator. And then I have to give my uh, double quotes over here. And I could just say something like, hello world. And now you can see over here that I actually gave spaces in between all of this. And over here, you can see that the string is not in my scope. For that, I would have to have standard colon colon to have the string in the scope. And there you go, it is in the scope. So other than that, the classes, the functions, and other preprocessor directives that we had before so for instance these so the classes the va functions and other preprocessor directives like these things on top they should be spaced with a single line vertically so one space vertically and they should be separated so you can see one space vertically one space vertically one space vertically with this function so that's how it should go normally oh yeah let's talk about the indentation here all indentations should be two spaces at a time according to what Google says in their style book so over here normally uh, I had my spaces which are default in VS code set to 4 and then I could change it by clicking on that indent uses spaces and I could just click and change this to 2 now I could just bring it back over here and this is basically the standard for C++ or normally if you want to use four spaces because I used to use four spaces then I think you should just be consistent throughout but according to Google what they said is that all indentations should be two spaces at a time so um, using tab or four spaces is a bad practice according to them the line length should be a maximum of 80 characters long so 80 columns have been the traditional standard and the, meaning that it should be at most 80 characters long at max so for instance like we have some characters here this should be at least 80 characters long once uh, once they're more than 80 you should just skip the line and go to the next one because having just be mindful of lines that extend too long and it's just really hard to read once a line is just really long you want to make your file more readable so these were a little bit of the standards that i wanted to highlight out and let's just follow now let's use the standard to write our hello world program so over here we have an int main function that's opened and now we're just going to have the standard see out and then we have a space over here for this insertion operator and then we have the double quotes and we can say hello world and then we have basically a semicolon at the end and then we should have the return zero now let's run this code in the command prompt here I have to go into my G++ and I'll go with the main dot cpp i could use the hyphen o flag to change the executable name by default a dot out is the name for the executable file but we could change it to anything we want let's say my program so over here we'll have that and you will see over here that there will be a new executable file once i hit the enter button now you can see my program executable is over here going back to my directory you would see over it, it's over here and now let's just we could just say delete all of this so and uh, we could just have this a little back and we're gonna say my program dot out or simply have my program and hello world is appearing on the terminal screen thank you guys for watching my video if you liked it and you thought it was helpful please make sure to like the video share it to your friends and others share it to others and keep supporting coding cleverly by subscribing to the channel we will see you guys very soon